Hello there, my name's Brandon and I make pictures out of tiny squares. And today I'm going to be attempting a very important rite of passage for any artist, which is the quintessential bowl of ramen artwork that you've probably seen many times over. Um, bonus points if it's sort of floating in the air also. I won't lie to you though, I actually love seeing different interpretations of food artwork like this. So I'd like to try my own pixel art version. And I was thinking about how to get this composition started, and I remembered the Fibonacci spiral, which is a curve following the golden ratio of proportion as seen by the way that the squares that the curve passes through decrease by the same factor from one to the next. It's found a lot in nature, it's used a lot in some of the most famous artworks, uh, whether that's intentional or not, I'm not really sure, but it's generally considered a pleasant compositional flow and useful in determining where to focus detail. So what I've got here is the Fibonacci spiral graphic from Wikipedia, which was on a transparent background, so I've just filled that in with an off-white there for my artwork. I figure if I rotate this by 90 degrees, we can start to see the potential for a bowl at the bottom, and then kind of a long strand of noodles flowing into it, right? Now, this image file is about 2,000 pixels in size, which means if I try using my one pixel brush on this, it's not really going to work out for me to make pixel art here. So I'm going to make this smaller by reducing the height from 2560 all the way down to 100 pixels, which I've selected somewhat arbitrarily, but for pixel art it feels like the sort of space where I can get something going. And you can see now that the one pixel brush is giving us an idea of the kind of scale that we're working with here now. Another thing I'm going to do is increase the blank space around the canvas because I want some breathing room around the artwork itself and for me to work on it too. So I've ended up with a canvas size of 150 by 150 with an artwork area for the spiral anyway of about 63 by 100 pixels. I'm getting started here by drawing in a silhouette for the bowl and we want to be able to see into it a little bit, so I pictured it to be tipping slightly toward us. The noodles are going to follow the large arc of the spiral, but I'd like them to be a bit more flowy than just that one curve, so I'm going to break them away from that guideline and wind them over a little bit. But I'd still like something to continue on and make use of that compositional space, so for now I filled that in with just sort of this abstract shape, and perhaps when it comes to the detailing that can be one of the toppings or something. I like to add a couple chopsticks as well, but now that the main components of the spiral have already been used, I guess, I wasn't sure exactly what to do with them that wouldn't interrupt the composition. So I've opted for placing them in a way that they're pointing to the center point of the spiral. And at this point, you know, I'm just kind of winging it because I don't really tend to work with this sort of compositional language, I guess. But at least in the case of the chopsticks here, it feels like there's something compatible about having them directing to that focal point at least. So with that silhouette in place, I've started erasing from it to create the basic line work and detailing. At this point, I'm not really going to think about all the additional toppings and everything quite yet. I really just want to focus on what's here already. And most importantly, the noodles actually, because that's really the thing that's the most tricky from a pixel art perspective, since there should be some kind of clarity in having these long flowing strands. And with what I've silhouetted here, I've been able to fit about three, sometimes four distinct noodles. So there's kind of this mix between strands that fit a lot of overlapping pixels to create a, a thicker sort of clear path along them, and others that just use a lot of single pixel channels or segmenting. For the most part, I've been erasing this in a way that's leaving this very clear black line work to separate each strand. But in a few spots, I've erased bits here and there to sort of blend them together a little bit more. The rest of the detailing here was just about continuing to tidy things up in that same sort of way. And I'm just going to jump ahead here to a quick before and after of this particular section. And hopefully you can see the way that I was just trying to break up those lines in different spots to soften their appearance and make things feel a bit more rounded too. Alright, now that the main architecture is in place, it's time to add in the real meat and potatoes of this dish. Uh, not necessarily literally those things, although you could if you want. Uh, I'm starting classic here with a boiled egg and some, I guess maybe it's like a sliced pork. <laughs> and that's uh, actually going right into that previously undecided space. Green onions are also a personal favorite of mine, so I'm eventually going to get some of those in there as well. But beyond that, one of my favorite things in this uh, sort of genre, I guess you would call it, of food art, is seeing things that are a bit more surreal in them. Uh, there's this artist that I follow for a long time now called Terry Sky who does a lot of great illustrated food artworks and a bunch that have that surreal angle to them where there's like cats and clouds and uh, sparkles and all these sorts of things that uh, really add a lot of fun to the piece. And I'm gonna try something like that here where I was thinking of adding some simple spacey kind of imagery 
like with shooting stars and stuff. Kind of a celestial theme, I suppose. I've also worked up a couple small animal characters to have scattered uh, around the noodles and stuff. Uh, they kind of come off looking like Pokemon, maybe. Um, I was thinking actually more along the lines of uh, cute alien animals, kind of like Tamagotchi or something. Uh, but I guess these would all be great themes, though. So just with those couple additions, it really felt like the line work came together pretty quickly. Uh, and before coloring, I took some time to actually just sit down and organize this small color palette for myself by thinking about what kinds of colors I might need for this one. The art style here reminded me of a CMYK piece that I did a while back. So initially I thought maybe I'd use the same limited color set as that one, with cyan, magenta, and yellow being the only pops of color there would be. But then I figured I should add in an orange to that just to have more to work with for the noodles and the chopsticks. And then, uh, of course, I'd also need a green for those green onions. So that's kind of the way that this set of colors came about. I was trying to give everything a softer, almost pastel -y feel also. So I made a point of dialing back how saturated everything would be. And you can see that I've kept the saturation at a value of 50 or less. And also paired that with a high brightness as well. So my hope was that at these levels, there's enough of a softness that makes it easier to take in so many different colors at once while still having some punchiness to them. The way I started coloring everything was just to lay down some base colors using the primary color of whatever that particular thing should be. But then I was also interested in trying to distribute these colors kind of evenly throughout the piece uh, by using them you know, as different shading or highlight tones or tucking them into different finer details where they'd fit. I also found they work quite well as softer background details, like using the orange as sort of this like sauce that's splashing out of the bowl, uh, or any of the other kind of spacey details for the theme here. I suppose the risk here is also just the busyness that I'm creating now, which <laughs> perhaps flies directly in the face of that earlier focus on the Fibonacci approach, and this, this dedication to the idea of like focusing details according to a spiral and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but at a certain point, I felt like uh, you just kind of have to follow your own intuition, you know? Uh, the spiral in my heart, I guess. <laughs> um, you know, you got to uh, trust yourself and have fun also. Uh, but yeah, it was like sort of easy to get carried away after things started taking shape like this. A later addition for the color was that I've added a purple tone as well. And this did a nice job grounding everything else because it felt like it's really filling that gap between some of the brighter colors and how dark the black line work is. So I've actually used it as an additional step of shading for the bowl. But then I found that it also worked well for just kind of dotting into some of the detail spots and having it provide this overall bump in dimension and vibrancy and almost kind of detail too without even really needing to commit to what that detail was. Um, so with that, it's kind of coming together, so let's go ahead and take a look at the finalized Cosmic Ramen. Here we go! Alright, as you can see, I've done a small touch of animation here with the animal characters looping between two different poses. And there's also a delayed frame for those that leaves this uh, colored imprint of their line work. And I kind of like how it just gives it this leggy sort of feel. And another classic ramen staple was this Naruto style fish cake here. Which, if we national treasure this thing now and use our golden spiral decoder again, you can see that I've actually placed that fish cake in the center point of the spiral. And it's spinning too with the animation, and that design has that uh, spiral in it too. So, I don't know. Is is that anything? Is that is it is that something? <laughs> anyway, actually, it really felt like this thing came together well, and I'm getting hungry now. So let's go ahead and close off with some CRT time. So thank you for watching, and take care and keep it square.